Okay, hi there. This is just going to be a quick little video on um, translating and solving simple word problems. And these are going to be word problems that lead to one-step equations. Um, and translating means taking a word problem and turning it into an equation of some kind, uh, turning words into math. Now, these ones are going to be pretty simple word problems that a lot of students will just be able to look at and figure out what to do to get the answer. And then they're going to watch all this creating an equation and solving an equation stuff and think, what a waste of time. Why would I do all that? Why is, why is he making this so complicated when it's so easy? Um, and the reason is because the equations that result from the word problems are going to get more and more complicated. So very soon, there are going to be ones where you can't just read the question and think, oh, I just got to add those two things together, or I just got to multiply. Um, they're going to get more complex, and we need an approach to tackle those more complicated questions as well. So bear with us here as we establish that approach, that way to take a word problem, read the key pieces of it, create an equation to solve. Okay, so for our first of two examples here, um, we have Jermaine and Carice both collect antique dishes. Together, they have 638 dishes. If Carice has 245 dishes, then how many dishes does Jermaine have? Okay, so uh, first thing we want to do is we want to define some variables, mainly the, the thing we're trying to find here. And in this case, that is how many dishes, how many dishes does Jermaine have? I'm actually going to throw two variables here. You actually don't need to because you actually know how many crease has, right? But just this is a, one way you could look at this question and it might help us to think about it. So we're going to let G be the number of dishes Jermaine has, K be the number of dishes crease has. Now, again, many of you might have just read this question and said, well, you just got to subtract. That's great that you saw that if, if you did. Um, but there is very soon going to be word problems where you can't just read it and know, oh, I just have to subtract those two numbers, okay? So um, next, let's look back at that question and see where the key information is that will help us create an equation. And that is gonna be really this sentence right here. Together, they have 638 dishes. That tells us the relationship between G and K, between Jermaine's dishes and Carice's dishes. Let's put that in red. Now, that together tells us we're going to be adding something, right? That's what together means. To, together they have 638, means that Jermaine's and Carissa's dishes add together to get 638. Let's write that as a math equation. We know that Jermaine's dishes are G and Carissa's dishes are K, that when you add them together, you get 638. There is the equation for this scenario, g plus k equals 638. Now we do have one more piece of information we want to include in that, because right now we have two variables. Well, that's no good because how are we going to solve for two variables? You can only solve for one at a time. Uh, but we know that Carice has 245, which means here when we say k is the number of dishes Carice has, we know that's 245. So we're going to take this k here and replace it with 245, like so. Now we have a nice simple equation. Let's get rid of all the color coding. Ignore everything up here. We used all this information to create the equation. Now we have a nice simple equation to solve. We're going to use our rules of equation solving. There's the equal sign. We want to get the G by itself on one side of the equal sign. And if you look to the left of the equal sign, it says G plus 245. So G is not by itself. There is a plus 245 with it. How do we get rid of plus 245? What's the opposite of adding 245? Well, that is subtracting 245. Am I allowed to subtract 245 from just randomly from somewhere in the equation? No, I'm not. But... I am allowed to do anything I want. This is the fundamental rule of equation solving. I can do anything I want as long as I do it to both sides. So in other words, these two things are equal. That's what that equal sign means. So if I subtract 245 from both of them, they are still equal. They're different than they were before, but they're equal to each other. For example, if you and I 
both have $50 and we both go to a restaurant and pay $20 for a meal, we each have $20 less than we had before. We both have $30. We still have the same amount of money as each other, even though we have less than we had before. So let's keep that equal sign right there lined up. A little side point here. A lot of people like to also tack a little equal sign, equal sign, equal sign, equal sign, equal sign down the left-hand side, which kind of means here's my next step, here's my next step, here's my next step. That's really an incorrect use of an equal sign. And it actually is going to, um, it's a good habit to get out of because it will eventually, in math, believe it or not, lead to situations where that will cause confusion and really, really actually create some problems for students. Um, and it's not just picky math teacher saying that. It, it really does. You want to get in this habit here where you have one equal sign in every line. Now, sometimes when you're working with an expression, yeah, you might have here's an expression and equals, equals, equals as you simplify it. But this is an equation. There's a left side and a right side, and they are equal to each other, right? Keep that equal sign lined up. Notice how I like to start with the equal sign on the next line, line it up. And then I'm going to work out from there what remains on the left after the change I made and what remains on the right after the change I made. On the left, I go G plus 245 minus 245. Well, what's plus 245 minus 245? That's zero. So all that's left behind on the left-hand side is just a G. Over on the right-hand side, we have a nice simple subtraction, 638 minus 245. You are at the stage in this course where you're allowed a calculator, so if you want, you can do that by hand, or if you want, you can punch that into your calculator. You're going to get 393. We now have G by itself on the left side. G is equal to 393. G is the number of dishes Jermaine has, so that is our answer. Jermaine has 393 dishes. So there's one example. Uh, let's take a look at one more before we go here. Trevor purchased a new sewing machine on sale for $550, which was $72.35 less than the price listed on the website. What is the website price? Okay, so again, let's define a variable here. What is the website price? That's the thing we're trying to find. Well, that sounds like that should be our variable. Let W equal the website price, the thing we're trying to find. Okay, now let's go read this question and identify what will help us create an equation. And the first thing we have is this $550. So Trevor bought the sewing machine on sale for $550. So that's the price he paid for it. Which was, well, that is some language that means an equal sign, right? Um, something which was this. So it's the same as the $550 is the same as something else. That's an equal sign. Another really common word for an equal sign is just saying is, right? Uh, $550 is $72.35 less than the website price. Um, and then we have finally in green that piece I just mentioned, $72.35 less than the price listed on the website. Be careful here because some students will accidentally say 72.35 minus W, but that is backwards, right? Because this thing is 72.35 less than something. When it's less than something, you have to subtract the 72.35 from that something. So let's take the red, blue, and green here. We have $550, which was, so is equal to 72.35 less than W. How do we say that in math? W minus 72.35. There is our equation. Let's get rid of the color coding. And like last time, we're going to solve this. So there's our equal sign. We want the W by itself on one side of the equal sign. Right now on the left-hand side, we have 550. On the right-hand side, we have W minus 72.35. So the W is not by itself. There is a minus 72.35 with it. What is the opposite of minus 72.35? Well, it's plus 72.35. <coughs> Excuse me. So 
We're going to add 72.35 to make that go away. Am I allowed to add 72.35 to one side of the equation? Well, no, but yes, if I also add it to the other side. So I'm doing the same thing to both sides, which keeps my equation true. The left side will still be equal to the right side. So there's my equal sign right there lined up over on the left. I have 550 plus 72.35. That's going to add together to give 622.35. On the right, I have W minus 72.35 plus 72.35. Well, that's just zero, which leaves just the W behind all by itself. W equals 622.35. In other words, W is the website price. So the website price is $622.35. Hope that helps and have a great day.